change, change, change. You don't have an option. You are going back change. Favor we follow you. Favor we follow you. That was very beautiful. We follow you. Yes. Ah. In case you don't know, this is the last day, and the scripture always say the last is better than the beginning. Two of us. You are like a tree planted by the riverside, and in your old age you shall bear fruit. Two of us. Yes. Very, very true, Duko. <laughs> Important. We will take intercession for the families. Thank you. Thank you so much. Be blessed. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Let's rise up as we pray together. We are praying now to the Lord, the God of heaven, the God who has promised and is able to do more than we could ask or think. Tonight is the last night of this great event, and we are trusting God as he has promised to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we are able to ask or think in Jesus' name. We want to lift up our voices and just praise the name of the Lord for the wonderful things our eyes have seen, for the wonderful things our ears have heard, and for all that God has done since this program started, lift up your voice and just praise the name of the Lord. God has been good. God has been wonderful. God has done more than we could ever imagine as a nation. And all over the world, great epoch is opening for the whole world. Let's lift up our voices and say, thank you, Lord, for this vision. Thank you, Lord, for this work. Thank you, Lord, for this move. Thank you, Lord, for this blessing. Thank you, Lord, for this new beginning. Thank you, Lord, for bringing your power down. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing upon your servants and all your other servants that have ministered to us. Let's bless the name of the Lord for his good hand upon them all. Let's thank God for the decisions that have been made. Let's thank God for the touch of God upon each of our lives. Let's thank God for the beginning in the families. Let's thank God for the new things God has promised to do and is going to begin. Even now, lift up your voice, everyone, and bless the name of the Lord. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your visitation over the church, over the nation, over the people, over communities, over cities, over nations, over institutions, in our nation and all the nations of the world. Bless the Lord for change makers international. Bless the Lord for the vision. Bless the Lord for those who are supporting the vision on both sides, whether they are Muslims or they are Christians or they are secular. Let's praise God for the blessings God has given. We give thanks to the Lord. We praise the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Give you a good day. The Bible says in Psalm 144, verse 11, Read me and deliver me from the hand of straight children, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of friendship. We are going to pray for all the families, the children in our families, that all the youth in our nation, both the youth, the youth of them, all pursuit in young people, all pursuit in old people, all pursuit in institutions, all pursuit in the uh, sectors of life in our nation, and in the nations of the world, oh Lord, deliver our nation from falsehood. Deliver our families from falsehood. Deliver the institutions from falsehood. Let truth and righteousness reign all over 
the nations. Shall we open our voices to pray and say, Lord, anything of falsehood, anything of darkness, anything of evil in the families, in the nations, in the communities, in the institutions that have been set up in the nation, oh Lord, cancel it. And let there be light. Let there be righteousness. Let there be truth. Let your name prevail in every institution. Let the glory of God prevail. Let the righteousness of God prevail. Let all darkness vanish away. Pray and talk to the Lord. This is whatever our plans. Without God, we can do nothing. We can achieve nothing. Let's put all that have been done. These five days, let's put it in the hand of God and say, Lord, we are closing today, but you will keep working in our nations, working in Nigeria, working in Africa, working all over the world. Lord, keep working your mighty work, your glorious work, your powerful work. And as you pray, God will do more than we could ask or think. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He goes forward by saying that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. We're going to pray for our nation that all the sons and the daughters, the Lord will make them to grow up in righteousness, in goodness, in success, in progress, in joy, in achievement, that all mediocrity will vanish from our land. All failure mentality will vanish from our land. That all awkwardness will vanish from our land. That all inferiority complex will vanish from our nations. Let's pray. Wake up our young people. The ingenuity in them, the skill in them, the intelligence in them, wake them up so that there will be achievement, accomplishment in our nations all over the world. Let's pray. Heal our nation. Heal our young people. Heal their mind. Divert their mind away from evil, from dark things, from deceitful things. Change them. Change their mind. Change their heart. Open your mouth. Let's talk to God tonight. As we pray as a whole nation, all of us, God will hear us. And God will solve the problem for us. And our nation will be born anew. The whole nation born afresh. The government born afresh. The institutions born afresh. All the young men and women born afresh. Fathers and mothers, fresh vision, fresh goal, fresh zeal, fresh passion, and fresh desire to do good will envelope all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to hear your amen. And then it says that our ganas may be full, affording all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets, that our oxen may be strong to labor, that there will be no breaking in nor going out. We are going to pray, first of all, that there will be prosperity and there will be security in our nation that all insecurity will go, all poverty will go, God will bring plenty to replace poverty. Righteousness will exalt our nation. Righteousness will lift up our nation. Let's pray that God will visit our nation, beginning from the young people, that there will be prosperity from the young people, from the old people, from men, from women, fathers and mothers, and there will be security, no breaking in, no breaking out, no uh, confusion, violence. God will subdue that in our nation and in all the nations of the world. Let's pray to the Lord that everywhere where this program is being beamed now, the Prince of Peace will prevail. God will prevail and bring his peace and stamp out darkness and Satan all over. Please, let's pray. As we are about to close now, let's pray, let's pray. And let's say, Lord, do it. Do it for our nation. For the nations of the world, pray for your own nation. Political people, God will use them. Educational people, God will use them. Commercial people, God will use them. Fathers and mothers, children, boys and girls, men and women, God will use all of them. Nigeria will be changed. Africa will be changed. 
all the continents of the world will be changed. By the end of this program and all the subsequent episodes, God's glory will fill the whole of the nations of the world. Let's talk to God. Let's pray. He will do it. He will do it. He will do it. He will do it for us. In Jesus' name we pray. And the whole people said, Amen. Now let's pray for the program tonight. That the hand of God will be upon the visioner, the servant of the Lord, who will speak to us. That the final word we need to push us out and to get us to carry on this vision, to run with this vision and accomplish with this vision, the Lord will put the final word in his mouth and we will leave this place charged, energized, empowered to do the will of God. Let's pray. Say, Lord, use me. In my family, use me. For my family, use me. From my own family to the nation, to the community, use my family. Use my children. Use myself. Use my wife. Use my husband. Use our family to be a blessing in our community, to be a change maker family in our community, that our family will be an attraction to people, to know that God can do things in families. Let there be peace in our families. Let there be progress in our families. Let there be prosperity in our families. Let there be quietness in our families. Let there be joy in our families. Let there be success in our families. Let there be the fear of God in our families. And the whole nation and the whole continent and the whole world will never be the same again. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me a good, good amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for what you have done for us as a people. This vision is a gift you have given the whole nation, Nigeria. It's a gift you have given the whole continent, Africa. It's a gift you have given from Africa to the other parts of the world. Lord, we pray this vision, this gift will prosper where to you have sent it, oh God. And we are praying that as we go on from this place tonight, Every participant here at the Alpha location and in all the places we are connected now, they will never be the same again in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that your blessing will flow through us to all the people in the community who have not attended. Those who are at home now, when we get back home, our lives, our families, our inputs, our community contributions will change the whole of our nations and communities in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for your servant tonight that you will use him with your power and wisdom and that all that we need that still remains, you will put inside his mouth and you will bestow on all participants, both who are there on the Alpha location and all over where we are connected together. Thank you, Lord, because you know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Give me another. Thank you. Nine. Thank you. Let's be seated. It's now time to have a talk on leadership. And you know that in this mission we are having without leadership, we cannot actually succeed. That is why we have called on a very revered person, a researcher, and somebody who has passion for this great job. Our brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we are calling no other person than our brother who have been here for the one till now, Alhaji Aliyu Danliti, Director of Public Affairs and Political River State for Council of Islamic Affairs here in the state. Can we put applause? Alhaji, you are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. You're, you're not clapping for Raji. You're clapping for me. I say for Raji. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All praises, adoration, and sanctity are due to Almighty God, Lord of the universe, Master of the Day of Judgment. You alone we do worship, and your aid we seek for. 
my brothers and sisters gathered here, otherwise called change makers. I greet you with the best of all greetings. Peace be upon you. Peace be upon you. And all change makers that are here to attend, the extension of this peaceful greeting is given to them. Again, I need to once again extend my heartfelt congratulations for this occasion as envisioned by our father, Dr. W. F. Kumuyi. We thank you very much, sir, and we appreciate you. We also thank God for giving you this vision. Most of us, as leaders, must have gotten one or two ideas. But God has not given you that direction. Today, that direction is fulfilled. And we we'll work with it. And we we'll get to the enviable height. Well, the topic I'm giving is just for 20 minutes. So I'm going to be brief and make my submission. That is leadership. Leadership in a perspective of spirituality, in a perspective of our businesses, in a perspective of our general endeavors as entrepreneurs, captains of industry, and what have you. It is not possible to have the ability to lead because some of us are not born with it. Nobody is born with that ability to lead. We all strive, seek for God's intervention and as well as develop our horns towards the cause of our good lives. Understanding successful leadership's key principal qualities is essential for us here as a brethren, as managers, as entrepreneurs, as aspirants, and what have you. We need to work as team leaders. Leadership, without any doubt, could have different styles. And these styles could not be good for one person to another, from a team to team. But our prayer as change agents gathered here, God will intercede for us. We will be great leaders and we amplify whatever we have got in here to a greater height. Our country must be good. Our health system must be good. There shall be no moral degradation. We shall not have failure in our education system. We shall also have a pronounced life out of poverty, out of hunger, that shall be good governance. My sisters and brothers, we must also look at some of the etiquettes of what a leader should be and how he should conduct or put himself in a perspective to be a good leader. Whosoever took a risk and the challenging 
to maintain a status quo in an ethical manner is obviously a leader. Therefore, it will be so interesting for you to know leaders do what they do to pursue innovations and this should not be seen as an obligation. Leaders and their leadership skills play an important role in the growth of any organization. Leadership refers to the process of influencing the behavior of people in a manner that they strive willingly and enthusiastically towards achieving what we are doing here as positive change and social impact orientals. But there are some features, of course, a leader should possess. Look at yourself, access yourself. We call them the three C's. There's only that I will speak about leadership without mentioning these key factors called the three C's of leadership. Although authorities vary on what they feel should decide on the element. One of it is competence. My brothers and sisters, we can't just be leaders. We must exert that competent leadership skills and goal in trying to direct human assistance to whosoever we are granting this leadership. Human assistance is key, is cogent, is important. We must also look at the next factor which is character. While leadership style may differ, all leaders, wherever they are, must commend respect. And respect is based on what you say and who you are as a positive and a change maker. This is a definition of your character towards the environment or wherever you have found yourself. And this character will include a leader, a truthful leader, a sound leader, to be trustworthiness, to be trustworthy. As a leader, your word are your bounds. You must look, measure, before it comes out of you, what will be the result or repercussion. So trustworthiness is key and is important as an element of leadership. We talk about honesty. Honesty is another key word, key element that we must also put into focus. When you're not honest in carrying the positive change and becoming a change maker, definitely you won't be found anywhere making any impact. Am I right or wrong? So we must walk in tandem with our scriptures. Scriptures 
has given us this guide. Say what is right, otherwise remain silence. Integrity is the next element. An integral person could move without bodyguard, without security, without bouncers. His subjects are his security, and God will stand for him. That is integrity. Then the next thing we need to do as a change maker will also adopt the leadership and also practice the subject matter as a policy which our father has also given to us and spelled it out to us without having any problem. My sisters and brothers, employees evaluate all these elements to determine you, you, as that leader. Your subordinates will look at this. You will agree with me in circumstances, in the political arena, in the faith base, and in so many other endeavors in life. Sometimes, when a man comes around, a man stood by you, a man does what he needs to do. You see people signing, walking away, not listening, not paying attention, just because he has not kept to that integrity. His words are not what he or she is practicing. The third point is communication. Communication is very important. Effective leaders communicate very well with their team members. It is indeed the most important characteristics of an effective leader. As a leader, it is essential to go beyond your stating tax. When I say stating tax, it means you don't say what is not obtainable. It is also ideal to have a transparent communication that will build trust and foster collaboration within the employees to feel your value and get motivated. So quickly, we'll get to the top skills of a great leader. And what are those top skills of a great leader? In addition to the three C's that we have mentioned above, these characteristics are so important for managers and executives. There are a few elements we can also look when promoting or hiring leaders. One of it is vision. This program, driving positive change and social impact, it was envisioned by our father. So we must, good leaders must have clear vision for what they want to achieve in the future. Because this future, this, this program is futuristic. If you go with it, please put it in your pocket, send it out to your friends, to your brothers, to your neighbors, by extension, where you found yourself within this country and in diaspora. Do what is obtainable. You'll be a great change maker. The next one is number two, 
we have commitment. Managers and executives have enormous responsibility. Of course, you cannot engage in change making, driving this positive impact without having seen some challenges. The challenges could come. These challenges are there. And what are these challenges? Some people will see you and say, no, we don't fall. This is non-denominational. But still, you, have, you will see some other persons that will come up with ideas that are not cogent. So please don't mind that. Strive. Drive the positive change and the social impact. You are indeed a change maker. We need to have collaboration. Yeah. We need to have collaboration. The collaboration we should have, leadership is not a one-man show. In every sector, you found yourself. Understand and know that without collaboration, you cannot succeed. You must be a team player. You must be a team player. Of course, there are erratic persons. They know more than any other person. That's their perception. Whatever you do, however you do it, in what manner you present it, it could be acceptable by all. They will not accept. These are people who knows more than every other person. Your company with these persons might not yield any goal or achievement. So keep them aside and forge ahead. Be that Connection, we must have connection. Ideally, leader must go, leaders must go along with others. Leaders with excellent skill will get more of their team and will collaborate more efficiently with their executive and other departments. This is to say, We cannot exempt government in whatever we are doing. Government must be part of what we do because they will give us the ambience, the serenity, the environment to spell out our mission and vision. And collaboration is key. Quickly. We need to have credibility. Credibility, fostering trust within our company is essential. And credible leaders engenders trust. So we should not hire people that comes off as a blowhard. We should look for people with an open mind, people who are willing to be receptive, who are willing to take the message of change so that we can propel and also achieve the much needed desire of this conference. Critical thinking. Critical thinking is solving problems that requires analyzing past experiences. Let me bring us on board. We had in 2020, we, had, we were trying to end something. And at the, at, at the receiving end, the populace, the masses, were the ones mainly harmed. Properties were destroyed and life wasted. In 2024, in this month, we have the end bad governance. It's a good agitation. Has it yielded any result? Yes, it hasn't. We're still clamoring 
to have a better, solid governance that will list him and listen to the aspirations and yearnings of the populace, and that is leadership. So in critical thinking, you must walk within the ambits of the law. We must report, we must tell our problems to Almighty God. We must work together, Muslims, Christians, in fact, those who did not accept to be Muslims and Christians, it's a department of their own, too. We're all seeking to have a better governance, to make this our country great and restore our values system. Roles and responsibility of a leader. The role and responsibility of a leader can vary depending on the organization and the team's they are leading. However, some common rules and responsibilities include as a change maker. Sometimes I'm passionate at all times. I'm passionate about what our father is doing with us here. We must learn. We must take what we're doing back to the basis. So, setting a goal, an objective, is one of the points we must go and think and put critically as a, one of our responsibilities as leaders. We must develop a template and implementing a st strategies. We must develop a template and develop strategies. And these strategies are strategies that we may need to see it. Like I said, we cannot, after today, put an end to what we have learned. Aluta, continue. We must continue. We must escalate to become change agents. We must also continue motivating and inspiring our team members. Who are your team members? Muslims are your team members. Christians are our team members. It affects everybody. So we must work together. We must be solving our problems in line with our scriptures, in line with our constitutional values and traditional values. We must also be representing our team intermittently as leaders so that we can be having feedbacks of what we have done. I'm sure my time is off. But in conclusion, leaders, leadership is a complex and challenging role. Whoever it is, however it is, when you engage in leadership, a meaningful leadership, a credible leadership, with integrity, honesty, and trustworthiness, true or false, God Almighty will reward you for doing the right thing. If you are interested in becoming a successful leader, you can do several things to develop your skills and knowledge necessary to succeed. By following these tips in this article, you can increase your chances of becoming a successful Positive change maker. Put your hands Thank you very much. Put your hands For Al Haji Aliu Dan Liti. Yes. Thank you very much, sir.
Thank you for that very delivered lecture. But let me just tell you one thing in case you don't know. Resilience is one of that. And because you have been under the rain, under the sun, and you're here, you are part of leaders. Can you put your hands together? Resilience. We want to use this opportunity to recognize the fathers in the house. They will come here to greet the people, to, you know, we recognize them and they walk up here and just greet you because they valued the change that our Father in the Lord is bringing by the vision God gave him. I want to recognize the presence of his most royal eminence, Cardinal J.I. Ikezim J.P. Eze Chiwem Owa of Ogniba. Ogniba. Sir, come and say greetings to just, your people. Just say greet, hi just to, your people. to your people. Praise the Lord. You are all welcome to this change making team in Jesus' name. Amen. A round of applause. Can we clap for him, please? A round of applause. Thank you. Next on the list, we want to recognize the presence of Chief Nla Eraron Ede Obolo II, Okan Ama of Egwede Ede. He's a retired director of DSS and he's the chairman of Ijo National Congress, Eastern Zone, and also the chairman of retired directors of DSS in, in Nigeria. Nigeria. Sir, you're welcome. He's already here. <laughs> Children of God, praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's Thank put you. our hands together Thank for... You. He is retired but not tired. No. At this point, we want to recognize and welcome to this podium where I'm standing... There is the number one person in River State. Number one citizen. His Excellency Sir Similayi, Fubara GSSS, yes. RS, the Executive Governor of River, River State. State. Yes. He sent an able representative who is here to talk to us, Dr. George, George. C. We Weke, the head of service, River, River State. State. Sir, you're welcome. Clap for your governor. Clap for your governor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Please, you may just sit down. The shoes that I have been made to wear are so long, big, heavy, and I can simply, in, with all humility, give you His Excellency's warm regards. As a matter of fact, he had planned to be here, but just an hour ago, I was asked to stand in here for him because there's an ongoing assignment that is still on now. And I bring very great regards from him to this great congregation. Our Father and the Lord, so I, I count it most fortunate for me to have shaken you for the first time in my life here today. Thank you, sir. Honestly, thank you. I also turn here, my brother, thank you very much. Thank you very much. The body of men of God on both divides. Thank you and good evening. Specifically, or particularly, I heard the speaker. The speech I heard can go for international conference. And we are having something free here without knowing. 
please let us jointly applaud the man that just gave the lecture now. <laughs> I am sorry that I came late because I can now see that I've already missed something. I missed something because that lecture, even for businessmen, in any walk of life, the what I had, the, the bit I was able to hear can change my life. And I pray God that it will surely change my life positively. His Excellency has asked me to stand in here for him. And I want to read a short speech I've written because when we come to represent, we must be guided. So we, speak, we write it down so it can be quoted rightly of what we actually have said. So permit me to spend some time, maybe two or three minutes, to read out a message of solidarity to this great gathering. Our dad in the Lord and other men of God here present, both on both divides. I bring you greetings from the governor of River State and by extension on behalf of all Rivers people. You are welcome to Port Harcourt, the Garden City. I am honored to address you today on behalf of His Excellency, Sir Simonalayi Fubara, Grand Servicer of River State, the Governor of River State. At this significant global men's conference, I think hosted by the Life Ministries, which is centered on the empowering team, I call it empowering team, driving positive change and social impact. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the organizers and all those who have contributed to making this event possible. Your dedication to fostering meaningful dialogue and partnerships is highly commendable. The theme for this conference resonates deeply, especially in a world that is continuously evolving and facing challenges that demand collective action. Today, I invite us all to reflect on our roles as men in driving positive change. It is our responsibility to be catalysts for social impact, leading by example in our families, communities, workplaces, and wherever we are. Even as I sit there, someone sitting by you may be learning something from you. The way you conduct yourself where you are sitting to someone that is by your side, maybe that has a behavior that on your own you don't like, the way you accommodate him, the way you talk to him, is part of what I think we are all going home here with today. In River State, we recognize the power of men's involvement in promoting progress, whether through community service, mentorship, or advocating for social change. We believe that when men take action, they inspire others and create a ripple effect of positive change. Globally, we have seen how men can lead initiatives that uplift communities from fighting poverty to enhancing education and health. It is these examples that we must emulate to create a more equitable and tolerable society. As we engage in discussions throughout this conference, let us embody the spirit of collaboration, not unhealthy competition. I encourage each one of us to forge partnerships, share ideas, and take tangible steps towards making a lasting impact in our communities. Together, we can harness our collective strength for the greater good of our immediate communities, our nation, and indeed, the entire mankind. There is one particular ingredient that I will not want to, to throw away in the course of all that we are doing. As humans, we could plan, we could execute, but the ultimate results will surely come from the Supreme God. Therefore, I ask you to always anchor your plans in the hands of God. 
We want the will of God to be done. Unfortunately, most times when we go to the place of prayer to ask, we come with something, a mindset in our hands. And when God reveals his real intention for us, we say, get behind me, Satan. God is speaking. May we, continue, may we at this moment try to look at ourselves and submit ourselves positively and wholly to the mighty hands of God. It is not our will that we are asking for, but the will of God. So we should, in everything that we do, try as much as possible to make sure that we get the real uh, 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 intention of God for us. This is what thing I find lacking, even in our personal lives and our global, our interactions. We always come with mindset, and this is one of the root causes of quarrels and all the words we are hearing. People are executing their personal interests, not the will of God. I pray that the will of God will be done in our lives. In closing, I thank you once more for your commitment to this cause. I have benefited by coming here, both spiritually and even physically and in whatever I would do. Sir, the paper you presented, I think you will be generous enough to allow us to have copies that we can also read and help ourselves. May the conversations here catalyze actions that indeed drive positive change and make a lasting social impact. We look forward to witnessing the great outcomes that will arise from our shared efforts. Be you not just hear us, but also implement what you have had here today. Thank you, and may God bless all of you in Jesus' name. Together, that's His Excellency Sasimilaye Fubara, GSSRS, Executive Governor of River State, of heavily represented by Dr. George C. Mweke, the Head of Service, of River, River State. States. Another round of applause. Very important. We have learned so much from your very important speech today, sir. God will always bless you, Your Excellency. Thank you. Before we go to the next item, the house is not complete without, some of us may have come today, the mother, our mother, in the house, our mommy, mommy Esther, Kumuyi. Some of you may not have seen her before. Woo! Please, Whoa. I want you to rise up and put your hands together yes. for the mother of the house. So Mommy, you are welcome. You deserve. You deserve. You are it. welcome, ma. We praise God. Thank you, ma. Thank you. We appreciate you, ma. We want to hear from the choir now.
There's a dawn rising on a brand new day. There's a strong wind staring across the ancient graves. And there's a voice that's calling, will you be set free? Does a change are coming? Let it start in me. Let it start in me. Let it start in me. There's a change are coming. Let A change are coming. Let it start in me. There is a fire that's burning, sweeping across this land. There's a heat consuming. gold emerging from refining flame there's a diamond sparkling where the ones was shame there's a revolution covering all the sea Yes, sir. 
Dukoda is a great one. Wow, very exclusive. Thank you. Let's have our seats, please. We are coming to the close of this great program. Yes. And this is the high point. A man raised by God, all of a sudden, a, a giant of academic impossibility showed up. And they said, according to them, his brain and book does not agree. But God raised him up, he knocked the giant down. Yes. <laughs> All of a sudden, God placed his hands on him in ministry. Then the giant of impossibility got up again and said, as long as you're crossing every T and dotting every I, your ministry will not grow. God put his hands on him and he brought the giant and hit his head on the ground. Yes. In Nigeria, the giant of change. The giant of impossibility of change. They say, oh, this country cannot change. Oh. Here is the man of God. Yes. Our father in the Lord. Yes. A mountain mover. Yes. The one the Lord has ordained. Powerful. Sir, with all humility. The mountain mover. We want to mover. tell you that the God who has used you, we are here to receive from you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. God has Thank you so very much. much. Thank you, sir. You are a great change maker yourself. <laughs> yes, my leader. <laughs> my leader, let me be a partaker. God bless you. <laughs> Change. 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 Yes, sir. We'll go through you. Thank you, sir. Everybody shout amen. amen. Already, the Lord has made you a change maker, amen. a leader. And everything you need, the Lord grant unto you in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we well, thank you at this time and bless your name. You gathered us together, not around a man, but around yourself. You created us. You are recreating us. And you want us to go forth and make a change everywhere we find ourselves. Lord, we give you a chance. Do it in every life. Do it through every life. Every man, every woman. Our leaders already in the government. Our leaders in the Islamic section, in the Christian section. Our leaders everywhere, men and women. You have raised us up already. Lord, we're going forth. We're doing it. Our country will not be the same again. Confirm it, Lord, in your power. In Jesus' name, we pray. Another amen. God bless you. You can sit down. I show appreciation and I honor all our leaders in this place tonight, and all those who have been with us from Thursday until today, all the men, all the women, all our leaders from this section and that section, and the speaker tonight, Al-Haji, I don't know the, all the name, Al-Haji what? Ali, wonderful. That's enough. A large good man. <laughs> and everything will latch tonight. I just want now to wrap everything up. I'm not going to read too much. I'll do the reading when I come back. <laughs> Are you coming back yourself? So tonight... We're looking at instructive pictures of change makers' leadership. Picture. Actually, we think in pictures. When I say a dog, you don't think in your mind, D-O-G. You just visualize a dog. If I mention a lion, you don't think L-I-O-N. 
You see in pictures, you see the picture right there. If I mention Mr. Governor, the executive governor of the state, you don't spell his name, you just see his face. So we think in scriptures. And um, that's the reason why we're going to look at some pictures now to get instruction and to have a leading. If that is a picture of a leader, that's what I ought to be, and you will be. The first picture I come to is the picture of the shepherd. The shepherd is a leader. A leader is a shepherd. And this, number one, I talk of the portrait of the seeking shepherd. The shepherd knows he has sheep, he has people, he's governing, he has people he's providing for, he has people he is leading. What do we learn about the shepherd? The shepherd goes before the rest of the people. As an example, as a pathfinder, as the way sure. And as the one that breaks the back of whatever may hurt the rest of the team. And so we have the shepherd. And God talks about that as a shepherd, the portrait of a shepherd. Look at Jeremiah chapter 23. And I'm reading from verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 23. Verse 4, here is what it says. And I will search up shepherds over them. Over. That means the shepherd is above the people he leads. It's above them in understanding. Above in vision. Above in strength. Above in determination. Above in everything. Because it's over them. They are not the same. In vision, he casts the vision and he shows the people to follow. They are not the same in the roadmap to know how to get there. He knows how to get there and he leads them. They are not the same in physical strength. He has a higher strength, a greater strength, greater knowledge. And then all he needs to be able to go on before the rest of the people he has. And he's also a provider. He knows the needs of the people. If he's a Christian leader, he knows that the people he leads, they need to have the life of Christ in them. Eternal life everlasting life. They need to have the strength of the Lord in them. They need to have the grace of God. They need to have the vision, the revelation, and they need to have the knowledge of what it takes to get from here to there. A shepherd. Now, a shepherd can be a local shepherd over a few people can be a person that has a wider scope nationally or may even go beyond a nation, may go to the continent, or it may be an aspect of the world that he is a leader on. And God said, I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, will feed the people appropriate food, balanced food that will give them strength and make them to have everything, the courage, the confidence that they need to move on in the path they ought to go. And it says, they shall fear no more. The people that the shepherd leads, that he guides, that he shows the way, the people that... The shepherd is saying, follow me. It says, when he leads them well, 
When he leads them according to the dictates of the word of God, they shall fear no more. That means then that the shepherd himself will not be a fearful person. He will not be a timid person. Somebody that has the thing to say, but he's so timid and he's so fearful, he cannot talk. That cannot be a shepherd. A shepherd must have courage, confidence. He knows the way he's going and he's leading the people and he does that courageously. He does that confidently. And it says, when we see his example, that he's not fearful, he's not timid, he's not shaking and shivering, we're told that the people that are led will fear no more. And then it says, or be dismayed, confused, shattered, not knowing what to do and where to go. Neither shall they Neither shall they be lacking, because the Lord has said so, and the Lord who appointed them, who appointed the shepherds, is able to make them. The people, they ought to be, I'm looking at Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. It says, and I will give you pastors, the same word, pastor, shepherd, leader, the same. I will give you shepherds according to my heart. According to my heart. Somebody that will know the mind of God. What's the mind of God for the family? What's the mind of God for this congregation? What's the mind of God for this local assembly? What's the mind of God for this stage? A shepherd according to his mind. And it's through that mind, the mind that does well, the mind that thinks well, the mind that wants the best for the people. He gives the shepherd that same mind. That's why the Bible says, have the mind of Christ. He is the great shepherd, gracious shepherd, and because we follow him, and he makes us under shepherds. Under him, we have that same mind. The Lord said, the shepherd he appoints, the pastors he appoints, that it will be according to his own heart, which shall feed you with knowledge. Shall feed you with knowledge. The knowledge we ought to have. A leader in any corporation knows what the corporation is all about, what we want to have, what we want to achieve, and he interacts with the members and the doers and the shakers and makers in that corporation. And he gives them knowledge. What are we supposed to do? What's our goal for this week? What's our goal for this month? What is our goal for this year? And ultimately, why are we here? And he's able to tell them clearly, understandably, this is why we're here. That's what a father does in the family. That's what a mother does in the family. That's what a teacher does in the class. What, that's what the headmaster the principal, that's what he does to the school. He has the knowledge why those children are there. And he gives them appropriate knowledge and understanding. What's the difference? Knowledge, understanding, the application of the knowledge that we have learned. We're able to apply that. So then, number one, we have the portrait of is seeking shepherd. Look at number two. Number two is the preservative in symbolic salt. Salt. Why do we put the word symbolic there? We know the real salt. The table salt we use 
in our homes. But now, we also have people that are regarded as salt. So salt then becomes a symbol representing the men, the leaders we're talking about. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, it says, Ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the salt of the earth. Now, salt, very good, white, pure, no mixture of sand with it. It's in the original state, but as long as that salt is in the bottle, locked up, closed up, it does nothing to people on earth. As long as the leader is shut up, is afraid of the people, he cannot come out, he does not want to come out, he does not want to interact with the people. Why? He has his reason, but he's locked up. As long as the salt is in the bottle, it does not have, there's no use for that salt. Salt, to be useful, must interact with all the other ingredients, must sprinkle 